Tonight it is a great privilege to have here uh, Governor August Wijoyo, uh, who is a minister in the Indonesian government. He is a retired lieutenant general who has served in many key positions. His current position is governor of the Indonesian National Resilience Institute, a ministerial level agency that's responsible for high level policy and strategy formulation, as well as for the strategic education of Indonesian senior leaders. I refer to some of the key posts that the general governor has held as Commandant of Joint Forces, Command and Staff College, as Chief of Territorial uh, Affairs for the Indonesian Armed Forces, as the Senior Deputy Speaker of the Indonesian National Consultative Assembly, which at that time was the sovereign power of Indonesia, uh, and, and many others. The, the point to make, and as I'm sure you'll hear from the governor tonight, though he may be too modest to say so, is the very key role that he has personally played and professionally played in the transition and reforms in Indonesia that have led it to uh, be the strong democratic constitutional country that it is today, and also a key role in the professionalization of the Indonesian military forces. I quickly refer to just a couple of his publications. I don't know, this one may surprise you that we have a copy. <laughs> it's Consideration of the Human Elements in the Command Estimate by General Lee Joyo, who was at that time a lieutenant colonel, and this was published in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas in 1988. Yes, I was young then. <laughs> Everyone has to be somewhere. <laughs> and as well, you have been at the National Defense University, and, uh, and one of your other uh, degrees that you have received here. Also, I want to point out that he is the author of uh, Transformation, another book called Transformation of the Indonesian Military. So please general, join me in welcoming uh, Governor Wijoyo as he addresses how to support democracy in a pluralistic, highly religious society. Governor. Again, thank you very much uh, for uh, your attendance tonight. Uh, I'm here at your service uh, to, uh, to, 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 to uh, fulfill your thirst about the knowledge of Indonesia. I have a wide uh, subject or topic to cover. So maybe uh, I just uh, want to start with a large, wide, broad brush of uh, Indonesia. Then uh, I would uh, enter and invite your uh, questions uh, and uh, entertain you uh, in the discourse uh, following uh, my brief presentation. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, to understand uh, Indonesia today uh, is, we have to understand uh, of, uh, of, of, of uh, where Indonesia came from uh, in the past. Uh, then uh, we also had experienced uh, uh, quite a recent transition into democracy, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which is still an ongoing process uh, until now. And uh, that would be the most uh, interesting point, because uh, because because you can find all aspects uh, mixed uh, in those times uh, in that transition, and what we are seeing and what we are hearing uh, about Indonesia today, uh, to my opinion, uh, is still uh, a result or in the context of that democratic uh, transition. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, if I am asked, uh, you know, we started the democratic transition in 1998 when President Suharto resigned uh, after uh, being in power for about 30 plus years. Uh, and uh, the Indonesian people decided 
and made that strategic decision uh, to succeed that uh, political system into a democratic political system. Uh, <clears throat> 1998, let's say it's 1999, let's say it's 2000. It's already 17 years. So when uh, people ask me, it's already 17 years, uh, aren't you bored with this transition? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I would uh, I, I would make my point that I, I refer to uh, uh, to uh, to a political scientist, maybe Huan Lynch was it, and said that 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 uh, the end of a democratic transition which marks the start of the democratic consolidation is that when everybody believes in democracy, he said that when democracy is the only game in town and where principles of democracy uh, is the only way to settle differences. Uh, I don't think we have seen this yet uh, totally implemented uh, in Indonesia because it is uh, in times of uh, transition. Uh, uh, not everybody uh, in town have uh, believed that democracy is still the only game in town. There are elements uh, in the society which believes that, uh, which believes that uh, differences uh, could be settled by the, uh, by, uh, by the, uh, uh, by, by political power, uh, by uh, showing uh, how powerful they are through physical existence or appearance, by demonstrations, and uh, we still also yet have to uh, to establish or uh, to uh, 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 to empower uh, to strengthen the arrangements of uh, the democratic system. Uh, some say that, uh, also this is in the political literature, that uh, the, the problems or challenges facing a democratic transition is that the changes or uh, challenges facing uh, the establishment of the capacity of political institutions. And uh, in a democratic transition, where democracy have to open up <clears throat> for differences, for different aspirations, then the competition and the race between uh, between between the coming of uh, various aspirations and the effectiveness of political in, uh, institutions uh, are there uh, to be uh, evaluated as to how effective uh, that transition is, and uh, in this. Uh, in this era, uh, <clears throat> uh, in this time, we see uh, in the uh, in the converging world uh, where borders, national borders, uh, are diminishing. Not in the sense of the physical borders of a country, but the borders uh, uh, of the mixing of ideas and thinkings. Uh, we see that. Uh, the growth of aspirations uh, can be uh, 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 can be multiplied in a very uh, fast way, and which leaves the effort uh, to uh, to enhance the capacity uh, of the political institutions lagging lagging behind them. Uh, so this is what. This is why we are seeing, uh, if you notice, uh, in those newly democratic countries, uh, Indonesia is rather lucky, then uh, there are in the region countries like Myanmar, there are countries in the Middle East, uh, <clears throat> as famous as the Arab Spring, uh, are struggling uh, in this democratic transition. Uh, democratic transition is not a, a linear process, uh, sometimes it's a Two step forward, uh, one step backward, uh, one step forward, two steps backward. Uh, it's a muddling through process. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, the democratic transition was marked by the 
uh, again, as I have said, the resignation of President Suharto, which was followed by the amendment of the Constitution. Actually, that was the start of the uh, political transition of the Indonesian democracy, and uh, <clears throat> that uh, changed the political system. Uh, some of the significant uh, features are uh, where in the past the president was elected by the National Assembly. Now, uh, all public elected public officials, the parliamentarians uh, or members of the uh, members of the representative uh, uh, of the people of Indonesia, uh, the regional council, uh, the regional uh, elected public officials, the president are now uh, uh, directly elected by the people. So we have a direct election for all those public officials uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, as the mark of the start of this democratic transition uh, through the amendment of the Constitution. Uh, secondly, also uh, quite a significant feature of the transition was the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, termination of the socio-political role of the military. Uh, in the past, the military had a dual function <clears throat> which uh, formally and legally <coughs> played uh, a role in social, social politics. Uh, that has been uh, terminated through the termination of the dual function uh, doctrine. Uh, that was significant uh, and it was also unique in the sense that it was the military who voluntarily, uh, who voluntarily reformed itself uh, to leave the role in social politics, and that, uh, and that the political transition into democracy was left solely to the civilian politicians. The military had no involvement at all in that uh, democratic transition, and it was left totally to the uh, uh, civilian politicians. Uh, so, uh, in this highly dynamic uh, political or social uh, situation of Indonesia, uh, if we ask, uh, and this is, I think, the methodology that uh, I would propose to you, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to ask uh, the question, uh, how is this should be arranged? Then we have to look into the uh, consensus uh, of the people, which is represented by the Constitution. Uh, and if we go, if we draw further back into history, uh, there is an interesting uh, point there also that uh, we were given uh, the uh, geographical area of an archipelago, uh, archi archipelago uh, in the equator, uh, which, uh, which 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 uh, spreads uh, as far as. Uh, almost Western Europe, uh, <clears throat> and that that archipelago uh, has been uh, occupied by various ethnic groups. Those various ethnic groups had uh, very much their own language, and the, they abide uh, by their own faith uh, of religion, uh, so that uh, it is a representation of Binika Tunggal Ika, uh, close enough to the meaning of uh, the, uh, the, the, the English of uh, unity and diversity. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, by that, our founding fathers, when they, uh, when they formulated or when they framed the constitution, uh, they, uh, they conducted uh, deliberations and uh, come to a consensus that the Constitution should uh, provide uh, an overarching, uh, an overarching uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Constitution uh, to allow all these differences to be accommodated. Uh, that was the uh, consensus by our founding fathers, and that is how that uh, we should live uh, in, in Indonesia. Okay, uh, so. Uh, the first element is that if we ask 
how should it be arranged in Indonesia with that situation, then we have to look into the constitution uh, as, a, uh, as uh, an implementation of the consensus of our founding fathers in 1945, uh, <clears throat> uh, when uh, we found uh, our independence, uh, and uh, that was uh, the consensus of our founding fathers. Uh, secondly, uh, is that secondly is that uh, uh, secondly is that uh, if we are to find answers as to why is this change becomes, I would not say difficult, but not so easy, uh, because all these cannot be separated as to how we live. And that comes into the aspect of the culture. We are basically a paternalistic uh, society. Uh, and uh, having a paternalistic traditional culture, uh, we just cannot live without leaders. And we tend to seek uh, to look for leaders to lead us. And uh, uh, actually, if we look into hindsight again, into our history, most of them we see that uh, it, uh, they were filled with uh, the existence of kingdoms, sultanates. So the people, uh, the people uh, 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 accommodated uh, or uh, experienced or, or, or uh, made up their uh, traditional culture based on the traditional culture of the a people uh, that had a leader in the form of a sultan, uh, in the form of a king. Uh, uh, and that forms as our traditional culture. Uh, we tend to look for leaders. Uh, what are leaders for? To uh, decide our destiny. Uh, and this has its uh, this has also its 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 its, uh, its practice right down into the uh, family. Uh, when I was uh, a child in my family, um, and although that I'm grown up now, in the eyes of my parents, I'm still a child. <laughs> <laughs> when there is an issue or a problem in the family. The, uh, the head of the family makes the decision, and the children never challenges that decision. Right. Uh, okay, uh, we come to the changes of the, uh, uh, the current changes uh, maybe later on. But uh, that, that was the basis uh, of, of the culture. Uh, and what I want to say is that in this democratic transition, that, left, that leaves uh, an impact. We are always looking for a leader, and uh, what is unfortunate that we tend to see leaders as a, uh, a, a perfect leader, a perfect leader, which does not exist in the theory books of leadership, which does not exist uh, in reality. Uh, because leaders are, uh, are, are, are uh, mm, the role of leaders are carried by uh, human beings. And there is no human being that can be uh, uh, or, or, or that has no uh, no 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 uh, deficiencies, right? Uh, <clears throat> okay, that, uh, there is one. And uh, in our traditional culture, also, we tend to uh, we have a, a large influence of our emotions. We tend to think and we tend to act more based by our emotions, instincts, intuitions, rather than our rationality. Uh, and so that in, uh, if we support or if we adore one leader, uh, it's like, you know, it's like falling in love. Everything is perfect. But once we saw cracks in that person, in which we thought that he or she was perfect, then we can go to the opposite. We can hate that person. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So uh, that is the uh, second characteristic. So uh, we are emotional. And uh, yes, uh, what I wanted to say was that we are looking for perfect leaders for a perfect relationship, uh, which never existed uh, in, in reality. But what is uh, worse is that uh, we mis-expected things uh, that is part of the principles of democracy. We thought that dem democracy would provide or deliver those perfect leaders. Uh, and we kept looking and waiting for those perfect leaders out of political elections. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, maybe until now, not everybody are aware that democracy never promises perfect leaders. If democracy has to take side between competence, uh, uh, even looks, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, popularity, democracy will take side with popularity. Uh, this has not been realized maybe by some segments uh, of, the, of the public. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, things that, are, that, that, that is not realized is that they, they thought that democracy is only a machine to provide leaders. They never realized that the soul of democracy is the sovereignty of the people. Uh, a presidential election is not a competition to find the smartest uh, candidate, but it is to find a person who he or she will be constitutionally uh, able to say that I represent the people. Why? I collected most uh, of the votes. Now, uh, these are uh, these are the uh, the the mixed expectations in times of transition, and that is why, as I have said, that the transition uh, can uh, can can uh, uh, can come into reality in a muddling uh, through uh, process. Uh, so uh, that is where uh, Indonesia is. And uh, what we see uh, now, uh, like uh, uh, Indonesia is becoming, uh, or, or there are, uh, there are uh, situations, values, new values, which uh, challenges these old uh, norms or things that we have taken as what uh, it should be. Uh, for instance, in the past, because of its paternalistic, paternalistic nature, for differences, we tend to conform. We tend to say, and uh, uh, we tend to say that there is only uh, one way to uh, define what is right. Uh, there is one source uh, of truth. Uh, where in democracy, we have to open up to differences of opinions, and again. To, uh, to handle or to manage those differences, we need effective political institutions. And that is still an ongoing process where uh, we, are, we are still working on it. Uh, this poses uh, uh, a challenge to uh, a new uh, democracy. And if we see that there are uh, many differences uh, of opinions, like the books that uh, we saw, I saw, uh, on my way in here, uh, differences uh, in Islam, where in the past uh, that has not came up to the surface. Uh, I think that these uh, differences, difference, uh, different versions uh, of Islam, which uh, came to the surface in Indonesia, uh, we should not see that only as a negative. Uh, negative, negative uh, dynamics. But that can also be said to be uh, uh, that democracy is working in Indonesia and that Indonesia has learned to face differences uh, of uh, opinions. And uh, the reality is that uh, I can say that those differences in the end uh, never came uh, or never developed uh, into uh, into, let's say, uh, physical clashes or uh, frictions. Uh, in the end, 
uh, they can come uh, into, uh, uh, if not a solution, but uh, an, an, an ending. Uh, so this is where uh, Indone uh, Indonesia is currently. Uh, there are uh, a lot of changes uh, and challenges. And uh, as for the region, I'm lucky to be accompanied by political counselor, is it, uh, Ferry? Yes, sir. From the embassy. I think he is uh, the authoritative uh, source, uh, resource person to answer. Uh, but uh, 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 before I go to what is happening in the region, I think what is happening in Indonesia is not only of the dynamics uh, internally within Indonesia, but we see also how in the international strategic environment, things are changing drastically. Uh, uh, we see uh, the, uh, even in the United States itself, which led into its implications in other parts of the world, in the Middle East, how Saudi Arabia is changing. Uh, and how we see failed states in several countries uh, in the Middle East. And with this, with this uh, converging world that can easily send uh, its, its uh, influences and implications uh, just to any other countries, including uh, to uh, Indonesia, including the ideology of Pancasila. Uh, uh, again, by the founding fathers, uh, they have dug into uh, the uh, local wisdom uh, of Indonesia and they thought that they came out with five pillars to be made as our uh, national ideology. They consist of one, the belief in one God. Secondly, is uh, uh, humanity. Uh, thirdly, it's uh, national unity. Fourthly, it's uh, democracy. Huh? democracy. And fifth is social, social welfare uh, in, in a just way for uh, all the people of uh, Indonesia. Uh, where in the past, in an authoritarian, authoritarian system, that ideology enjoyed, uh, enjoyed a protected uh, existence and was well disseminated to the public uh, with the coming of democracy and the uh, openness of uh, globalization. Uh, as never have been experienced before, Pancasila uh, faced the challenges of being able or having to be able to compete with ideologies or uh, thoughts that uh, uh, comes from outside of Indonesia, including those uh, various uh, Islamic uh, interpretations uh, from uh, different elements uh, uh, of, of Islam. But as I have said, uh, if we see those differences in Indonesia, uh, I don't think that we should only see it as a uh, negative form, but uh, that is to say that, that, that uh, uh, democracy is now in place uh, in uh, Indonesia. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for the region, if I have to uh, to, to, to touch uh, on uh, regional uh, interest and how the Indonesian policy plays, uh, I think international relations is a meeting of the national interest of various countries. And uh, the uh, next issue there is how does one country places scales of priority in their national interest? What are their priorities? Of course, the first priority should be survivability. I think we all agree to that. But uh, the implementation of that is what is uh, the rank of priority? For, uh, <clears throat> for clarity of what I wanted to say is uh, about uh, China. Uh, okay, in the past, in, uh, in the Cold War days, China uh, was a communist party, but China, I think, is still uh, ruled by the single party system, the uh, Central Committee of the Communist Party. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, uh, and if we study the history of China, it is not all, also a linear process. Uh, they have had their challenges and they have been able to get over their uh, challenges. 
uh, we uh, hear of leaders like Mao Zedong, we hear leaders of Deng Xiaoping, we hear leaders of uh, Liu Shaoqi, uh, and uh, I think China now enjoys the result of their hard work, uh, where they were able to to build their national economy, while they are uh, they are uh, they are improving in their economy. We see in other countries economy their respective economy uh, is uh, being uh, down uh, downgraded. Uh, so here comes China. Uh, and uh, uh, with this globalized world, the interconnectivity between countries are such that uh, it is not anymore like the Cold War world uh, of the past, where we can draw lines uh, very uh, clearly uh, between ideologies of national interest and uh, between pacts, especially the defense pact. Uh, now, uh, it is uh, a very much uh, diverse world and uh, diverse form and levels of national interest for each country. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if in one aspect, one may see that maybe China is a threat, uh, but China now is, 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 is uh, trying to pursue uh, of meeting their national interest in a more uh, in, uh, in a more in intelligent way. It is not by the sole use of their military power that they pursue their national interest. Uh, with the result of their hard work, of their economic power, uh, they are now reaching out to the world uh, to achieve their national interest through uh, what one book says as, uh, as, as, as uh, I forgot the term, uh, I forgot the term, uh, uh, charm offensive. Charm offensive. Right. Their offensive is charming. <laughs> uh, and which leaves sometimes uh, a country, you know, uh, 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 could, 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 not, uh, uh, could not have any uh, real uh, alternatives uh, uh, if uh, if it is to be uh, accorded uh, in relation uh, to their needs. Uh, so with that, another country may see China uh, with their economic power. And as a matter of fact, especially in the region, uh, that you know, uh, the only country which has uh, monetary or financial reserves uh, that large, uh, 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 we, can, uh, we can say that it is only China. Uh, the only country that can lend uh, uh, capital uh, cheaply, uh, practically, uh, is uh, only China. Mm -hmm. And uh, they offer also assistance in other fields uh, 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 in their view that other countries need their, uh, their assistance. So that is, those are the two aspects of China, uh, of how we see whether uh, in the region and how they have uh, tried to expand their influence with their uh, one belt, one road, uh, the modern form of their historic Silk Road uh, of the past. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that is uh, how countries see China uh, in the region. But China is also realistic. Uh, they may try to compete uh, with the US uh, economically, but China is also realistic in seeing that militarily, China uh, can never compete with the US. Uh, so they uh, form uh, a very uh, realistic foreign uh, policy. But we see also that China is uh, like what they have been doing in building up their economic power, they are also building up powers in their other dimension. Technology, for instance, uh, they are moving up uh, very fast. Uh, so with that, uh, it would be interesting for me to hear your views uh, where I can also learn from uh, your uh, opinions.
Time for my wine. <laughs> Please use the microphones and speak directly. In the Thank you for coming all this way, um, just being with us and uh, such a very long journey and, and all the difficulties along the way. We appreciate you being here. Um, I know that uh, Indonesia is a member of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, uh, which um, in 1990, with its Cairo Declaration, um, left, abrogated the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights in favor of uh, only Islamic law, Sharia. And I'm wondering, as Indonesia progresses along the transition to democracy and modernization, what consideration is being given to leaving the OIC and or to denouncing the Cairo Declaration? Pak uh, Ferry, uh, did we leave OIC? Would you? Would you? Oh, would I? Would we? Consider it. Oh, would we? I see. So it's a question uh, sentence. Sorry, but, but very. Uh, I'll come back to you later when I need your assistance. <laughs> uh, would I, would we leave? Oh, I see. As you have said, uh, as you have said, uh, the interest of one country to join uh, an organization, if there are differences of views, uh, is that uh, is that. Uh, 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 first of all, is that uh, that country would be accepted as part of that large organization where they can uh, advance uh, their national interest uh, through that organization, one. Uh, secondly, if there are differences, uh, it is a matter of uh, could I influence them or am I being influenced by them? Right? Uh, uh, and uh, in our foreign policy, uh, Indonesia have always tried uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, influence the OIC to the best uh, interest of the uh, Islamic member countries, not only to those countries, but also to the best interest of uh, or how Islam can give the best interest to the uh, uh, general international community. And uh, as we know. Uh, Indonesia tries to promote uh, uh, the moderation uh, of Islam. Uh, Islam does not necessarily mean the uh, strict, uh, uh, the strict <coughs> uh, 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 to adhere to the Sharia law. Uh, Islam uh, is a wide-ranging uh, book of teachings, uh, and if you try to find a comprehensive meaning of uh, that uh, book of teachings of Islam. Yeah. Uh, in the end, uh, Islam would, uh, would, 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 would place itself in the effort uh, to bring uh, uh, Rahmat. What is Rahmat? Mercy. 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 Yes, uh, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, compassion. Uh, yes, uh, compassion uh, to humanity, uh, to mankind, uh, and uh, to the world. Uh, as in any other international institution, which means political institution, I don't think any of those uh, organizations has a uh, solid aspiration. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think the, in the end, the purpose of uh, Indonesia being a member of OIC uh, is an implementation of the uh, principles of the Indonesia's uh, foreign policy, and that is a... Uh, a uh, yeah, free and active foreign policy. I hope that answers. I know it's not satisfactory. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we try to influence the bad influence with good influence, but that is that is not easy. But in the end, that is the essence. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, 
Please enlighten my ignorance about Indonesia. It's, as you said, it's an archipelago. Uh, how is it unit with so many, you know, varying areas and islands? How is Indonesia unified? Uh, how do you help bring about unification? Uh, again, respecting the diversity. Uh, do you do, uh, do you do that through television, radio, uh, travel? How is travel accommodated throughout the um, throughout the archipelago? Is there a, a active airlines that go to every place or boats or you can enlighten me thank you uh, yes uh, thank you I'll try to answer that uh, Indonesia is as an archipelagic country uh, our form or method of of, of unifying those diverse uh, islands or ethnic groups uh, uh, is on wars by ideas, by ideology. Uh, although we are not a nation state, meaning that we do not consist uh, solidly or uh, homogeneously from one nation, uh, but uh, again, there was one scholar who said that uh, a country uh, is uh, a matter of self-perception. Uh, who shares uh, common understanding, common history, and uh, shares also a common purpose. Uh, would it maybe the Dutch that united uh, Indonesia? We don't know. <laughs> but it was the Dutch who colonized Indonesia from the farthest western island into the farthest eastern part uh, of uh, Indonesia. So. Uh, the first uh, aspect which united Indonesia was the aspect of idea uh, and uh, ideology. Then we come to think as Indonesia modernizes itself, we come to think of more of the physical uh, aspect. Uh, uh, and now the administration of President Joko Widodo is putting priority on the building of uh, infrastructures. Uh, and one of them uh, is declaring the uh, maritime policy as one of its uh, highest priority uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in their uh, policies. Uh, and uh, things that can be said uh, is uh, relating uh, to this is the building of interconnectivity uh, between islands which maybe in the past uh, have not been put uh, enough, uh, have not been given enough attention. Uh, whether it is uh, the sea lanes uh, or by uh, air routes, uh, uh, that way also we try to, uh, to, 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 to uh, implement uh, what uh, we hope to be uh, a one economic outlook of an archipelagic Indonesia, meaning that the price of petrol uh, or uh, fuel uh, in Java, uh, we would like to see is the same price uh, of petrol and fuel in Papua or in the farthest outer islands. Uh, that is uh, the direction that the current government uh, is working on. But again, it is to improve the interconnectivity of those islands. Uh, Governor, if I may ask a question related to China's charm. <laughs> Several days ago, a U.S. Uh, naval military destroyer, China claim, came within 12 miles of uh, part of the Scarborough Shoal that China has unilaterally claimed as its own. So they sent a military frigate to escort the U.S. naval destroyer out of the area. And I believe it was yesterday or the day before there was an incident uh, between Indonesia and China, again on a disputed area in the South China Sea. Uh, do you, 
How does Indonesia regard China's extraordinary claim to sovereignty over the South China Sea and sort of the East China Sea? And do you think that can be resolved peacefully or that this is a harbinger of a less charming side of <laughs> China's behavior? Uh, uh, yes, uh, the, st the stance of Indonesia in uh, her foreign policy in any, uh, any, any, any uh, overlapping claims uh, of territory, whether it's maritime or land, I don't think we have anything uh, on land overlapping uh, claims, uh, is one, uh, Indonesia would uh, stand by the sovereignty uh, of the Indonesian Republic. Uh, secondly, uh, that they should be solved by international uh, laws. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, uh, by never firing uh, any weapons. So I think those are the three principles in which Indonesia would always try to uh, find solutions to uh, any differences with other countries. Uh, and uh, as I have said, uh, as I have said, uh, uh, that that the uh, uh, what is it uh, intertwine uh, the relations uh, between countries uh, in uh, various aspects are too close nowadays uh, in the converging world that uh, I don't think war or uh, physical military solution would. Uh, be uh, favorable or advantageous to uh, any country. Uh, and as long as Pak Ferry, the diplomats, are willing to sit down and talk, uh, then uh, I think uh, there is uh, a solution on the horizon. Uh, there are experiences in the Indonesian diplomacy in the past that uh, whether uh, it is by inviting, uh, if, it is, it, if it was a uh, uh, a sort of differences by uh, other two countries outside Indonesia or within Indonesia itself. Uh, uh, it is to invite to, uh, to, to talk and maybe to find some common endeavors uh, which, can be, uh, which can be seen to the best interest of both countries in a sort of uh, cooperation. Uh, we did have one, uh, one, one uh, experience of the solution of the island of Sipadan and Likitan by President Suharto, which was uh, to be left to be decided by the uh, ICC. And uh, we, Indonesia, uh, was consistent uh, to the decision of the uh, ICC. So there are various ways, but uh, those are the three principles uh, that are held by Indonesia to try to find solution uh, in differences with other countries. Perhaps question a little bit outside of your area, but uh, what uh, efforts uh, is the government or is the government making now in connection with deforestation? Because this is a an important issue, the whole environmental question, but uh, deforestation specifically. Yes, uh, you are right. It is out of scope. Of <laughs> <laughs> you are right, this is out of scope of my presentation, but uh, I will try and, uh, and, 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 and uh, because I am not uh, an expert in, uh, in, in climate change, uh, I will only uh, say from the facts. Uh, in the past, Indonesia has been blamed by neighboring countries of forest fires that uh, come from the territory of uh, Indonesia. Uh, this year, uh, uh, by, uh, by the, uh, uh, of course, uh, there, are, there are always uh, some, some, some interaction when uh, something happens in one country will uh, influence uh, uh, another country. And that has made uh, Indonesia to step up uh, in trying to prevent uh, forest fires. Uh, by going to those uh, companies 
uh, who have relevance in the source of these fires. And this year, there has not been any, uh, let's say, protest from those neighboring countries because Indonesia has been able uh, to put a, a significant, uh, a, a significant uh, form uh, that uh, these neighboring countries did not feel any uh, haze that uh, came from uh, forest fires uh, from the location of the Indi Indi within the Indonesian territory. Uh, so, fair this way has been stepped up by the government uh, uh, into the, the forest itself and by, by, by injecting into the, uh, what do you call that? the uh, uh, underneath the forest uh, to 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 to, uh, <clears throat> uh, to, uh, uh, to put off to put off the fires uh, those those uh, those that are still uh, that can still keep burning uh, and also going to the companies who owns those forests and one of the most difficult is that sometimes in the region again that 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 uh, making fires uh, is the easiest way of preparing the land mm -hmm. for uh, for for uh, before planting them, and that is adopted by you know the common people uh, in the region. But uh, again, the uh, that that by the common people uh, is not seen by violating the law. Uh, they say that. We've been doing this for generations and generations and generations, but uh, through social communications, uh, the uh, government uh, have been uh, putting efforts, whether at the superficial, uh, traditional, uh, and uh, uh, all those that have uh, created uh, forest fires uh, in the past. And the result is that this year, uh, it has resulted uh, in uh, a drastic difference. Okay. Please believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you you mentioned the reduced role of the military. Yeah. Uh, you, the, you mentioned the reduced role of the military, particularly if you look back in history, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, the Indonesian military was a significant player in the domestic affairs. Uh, now that it's reduced, what remains of the old responsibilities? For example, someone has to do border control, uh, maritime control against transnational crime, uh, readiness for natural disasters, search and rescue. Do some of those activities persist? Have you, is there a national police force which does it? Is there coordination between the two? How does that work, generally speaking? Uh. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the end state of the military reform uh, is actually uh, based on the constitution and the principles of uh, democracy. Uh, from the constitution, uh, uh, 1945 was the writing or the framing of the constitution. Uh, 1999 was the reform of the military. So how many years uh, was that, Pak uh, Wibawa? Uh, okay, I'll test your mathematics. From 1945 to 19... Uh, huh? 1945 to 1999. Oh, let's say 2000. That would be... 54. Okay. 54. Okay. Okay. Uh, 54. Uh, we have neglected that. Uh, but do we realize that the dual function those roles that were played by the military were never mandated by the constitution, right? Uh, but the, uh, it was only in 1982 that the dual function was formally uh, accommodated or contained in the uh, defense bill, defense and security bill. Then the question would be then, how then? Could it be practiced uh, in reality by the Indonesian military? Uh, it's because that in reality, uh, the political system 
that was tried uh, to be uh, uh, to be to be to be uh, uh, implemented uh, were was was carried out by the first generation of the founding fathers, <laughs> and they have uh, in their idea of their uh, memories when they fought together during the struggle for independence. Uh, so uh, the soul there was 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 uh, the soul there was camaraderie, comrade in armship, when they fought together during the struggle for uh, independence. Uh, so that we had a saying then that anything can be arranged, and that is not totally untrue. Uh, when my children ask me, what is comradeship? What is camaraderie? What is comrade in armship? It's like a uh, homecoming for a high school reunion. Some have become uh, a diplomat. Maybe one has become a president. Some have become generals. Some have become successful CEOs. Uh, the unsuccessful CEOs were never known. <laughs> uh, but when they all come for a high school reunion, those positions are irrelevant. They all come home as graduates of that high school. Then how does the work of the reunion committee being uh, carried out? Through collegiality, okay? Uh, you are part of a school band. Okay, you take care of the entertainment. Hey, your father owns a transportation business. Borrow two buses, can we? Uh, uh, those sort of things. Uh, and uh, uh, the Indonesian military uh, never launched any power takeover by force. The Indonesian military never launched any coup d'etats because they believed that if they launch one coup d'etat, it would only cause a contagious for a uh, process of counter coup d'etats. Uh, then uh, why can they have uh, that role? Uh, well, it's because that 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 uh, uh, that uh, when they were fighting together for the uh, struggle for independence, we are now fighting together to develop the country. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and why was it terminated in? 1998-1999 with reform. It's because that President Suharto was the last uh, uh, figure, the last leader, the last warrior here uh, in the stories of uh, Indians and sheriffs in the US, right? was the last warrior of the founding father's generation. Uh, so uh, when President Suharto resigned, I, I wondered, can my generation continue with that sort of arrangements? I don't know the civilian leaders. They come from civilian universities. Uh, so uh, I don't know them before, unlike the 1945 Founding Fathers generation. So we have to find a new system where uh, 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 the interaction between authorities can be laid down uh, in a specific way. So the people of Indonesia uh, uh, chose democracy, meaning that uh, everything we do uh, in the life of the nation, uh, the political system, any system, any functions of the government have uh, to be arranged based on the principles of democracy. Not in uh, uh, not in exception is also the function of defense and also uh, the role and authority of the military. If you ask me, where do we go? We go by seeing the models of a country in an established democracy by, uh, by, by, by providing its role and authorities through their various agencies. To the military, to the police, to the military uh, with war fighting missions. Why war fighting missions? Uh, to preserve sovereignty 
and integrity of the national territory would be uh, to repel and to defeat foreign military, but nothing to do with uh, with 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 uh, uh, involving itself uh, in the domestic affairs uh, uh, of the of the state. The because the national territory is a territory where uh, the national legal system uh, is in operation, that would be left to the role and authority of the various law enforcement agencies. And the military is never designed to be a law enforcement agency. So the model would be, we are seeing the model of a country of established democracy. That is the direction that uh, we are uh, we are we are uh, uh, moving towards. Does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. The president has too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Governor, I'm the director, so I get one more question. <laughs> if I may, uh, former President uh, Abdul Rahman Wahid spoke very forthrightly, uh, I'd say even bitterly, about one foreign influence into Indonesia that he thought was polluting the Islamic religious life of the country. And that was Wahhabi influence from Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know how, how strong he was in making that point. Do you think today, with the ascendancy of uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the statements that have been coming out of Riyadh about a different kind of Islam that they would like to see developed in their own country. Is it too early to, to see any diminution of that bad influence in Indonesia coming from the Wahhabi strain? Mm. <clears throat> um, that's my last question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, the authority to answer that question would uh, fall in the authority of the Saudi Arabian prince, <laughs> rather than the Indonesian former general. <laughs> I may stop by in transit on my way home here to ask the Saudi Arabian prince. It's too early to tell. <laughs> yes, too early to tell. Yes, it's too early to tell. I think we have to uh, observe uh, the developments uh, of it. Uh, uh, is uh, can Wahhabi be separated from uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi uh, Arabia uh, as a whole? Uh, uh, can Wahhabi be separated from the uh, uh, royal family of the Saudi Arabia? Uh, and uh, those are the questions that uh, we should ask, and we should watch uh, into the future of uh, the uh, of how uh, it will develop. Can it be separated from Indonesia? That was my question. Uh, well, uh, again, uh, we are in time of uh, democracy, uh, and uh, first of all, in time of democracy, especially in a presidential cabinet system, uh, much of what is effective policy uh, is being decided into the character and personality of the elected uh, political leader of Indonesia uh, in a presidential democracy. Uh, secondly, uh, is uh, that uh, 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 is that we believe that the mainstream uh, of Islam in Indonesia. Uh, I've read it somewhere from my readings that majority of is Islam in Indonesia uh, 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 consider themselves as member of either NU or or uh, Muhammadiyah. And those two are uh, are uh, considered uh, to be moderate Islam by the public. Uh, only minority 
but majority condemns the Hizbut Tahrir, uh, even more the uh, Wahhabi. So uh, we believe in that, but uh, there is also, uh, should be uh, maybe a social process, a political process uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to show that uh, the majority uh, of Islam of Indonesia are still the Indu indigenous Islam of Indonesia, which is the moderate Islam of, of Indonesia, and uh, provide them moral or physical support that they are able to uh, 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 to challenge and to overcome uh, those uh, uh, those political Islam that uh, actually has only been recently uh, set foot uh, in Indonesia and coming from outside Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Please join me in welcoming General.